Welcome to Coinbook. My name is Calvin Waite and I trade Bitcoin and cryptocurrency for a living. My goal is to help you guys to become better traders and to help you see opportunities within the crypto markets. So please subscribe. I would love for you to be a part of the community that we are building. So we are still in the green zone. We have our 50 above the 100. All of our uh, trend lines are in alignment. Everything looks good there. Um, I'm going to go ahead and remove some some noise off of our chart. We have we uh, had a discussion about this green zone here that uh, a long time ago when we got down in here, I was really excited because this was the drop we needed to get support, and that there was no way we were coming out of this thing, and we're pretty much so far into this green zone here that uh, I just don't expect that we'll touch it again. Uh, we've we've been above 10,000 for a long time and uh, it's not really something that's gonna be really applicable uh, nowadays. This was a shorter term trend. We were just watching to see when this would break and it's broken and I don't see it providing any more support than our very long term line here and this high. So these are probably our more important lines left. This bottom one is our giant three year descending wedge that we broke out of. <clears throat> so I don't expect that we'll ever touch this again, but I guess we'll leave it on for fun. Um, so I wanted to tell you guys, uh, for those of you who have been uh, listening to the channel for weeks, <clears throat> probably longer than weeks, <clears throat> but I've, I've just mentioned that uh, we will have a hard time crossing 14,000. There's just, and it, it was because of the monthly monthly chart, where we have the, the candle bar bodies of our monthly here, and we have our very tip top of that found resistance right here. <clears throat> well, guess where we're gonna find a little bit of trouble? It's gonna be right here. So last night, uh, to prove to you guys that um, not just all all talk and no action, there were uh, every every month I sell a little bit of crypto to pay for the monthly bills, <clears throat> and I knew that we were getting close, so I went ahead and put in a sell order at what do you think? At thirteen eight eighty, I thought that we might exactly hit that point. Now, as you can see, our high was 13.864 and 89 cents. <clears throat> so I put that order in in the morning <clears throat> and I waited probably 12 to 14 hours for it to uh, close and we we just played played in that ballpark. I, I saw when we were $30 away and saw when we were um, within $80 of closing right up here in this 13.8 land and then um, just knowing that we had a, a solid attempt and guessing that we were close enough that the 13864 was essentially going to be the same resistance that the 13880 was going to provide. Like we were just, the, the margin was within thousandths of a percent of us hitting that resistance. So I went ahead and uh, made my sell at 13750. So I it did drop a little bit, but I took profits here and then went to bed and woke up and we were at 13,000. <laughs> so I'm, I was not surprised. I knew time in this area is limited. We do not play with giant long-term long resistance for long. So if I switch back to the hourly, you can see how short we were the high of this candle here, the the preceding candle. The high of this was thirteen seven fifty. We had an we had a one hour bar that got us there, and we were back down. So we have you have a precious small amount of time to capture uh, trades at major support and resistance lines, and it's not an exact science. Uh, the exact science would be me closing that at 13880, but the uh, safer route is to go a little below that so that if we do touch it at a, at a 
and a whale just takes us down, uh, you still close your order. So I'm not crying about exiting at 13,750, but still, um, it's a very kind of it's a nice reminder to uh, be careful around these points. But all in all, we're in good shape. Um, if we can stay as as much above this line as possible, if we could even last a few more weeks and then touch this line, it would be spectacular. But you know, we can't force markets. We watch and see and we react to, to the prices. I'm here to say that there's a lot to be said for consistency. If you're doing things that you should, even if it doesn't work out every time, <laughs> you've got to celebrate. <laughs> so this is my own creation that I worked on this morning. <clears throat> Um, this chart represents the log scale of the price in Satoshis. So this is all in Bitcoin. Uh, 10, bit, 10 Satoshis, 100 Satoshis, 1000 Satoshis. On this axis we have the coin supply that, that uh, each coin will have in 2050. So this normalizes a lot of um, the max coin supply, especially for coins that don't have a limit. But you can see how um, here, now this one is one million, this is 10 million, so these are in millions, and uh, they are also, they also go way out. So we have, we have coins that are hundreds of billions, which is insane. <laughs> so, how to interpret this is what I have done is I've plotted about 100 and 140 different coins, the just essentially the coins that I could find, that I could get coin supply and their current price, and I have plotted them in this logarithmic chart. <clears throat> amazingly, I mean maybe not too amazingly, but you can see a very strong relationship between price and coin supply. When a coin comes out on the market and it's brand new and they say hey we've made a coin there's a hundred billion coin supply and the price is up here <clears throat> it's trading at like 10,000 Satoshi or something like that guess what's gonna happen that thing is gonna come down and if you it's it's very it's very interesting. So <clears throat> what I had to do uh, to kind of get this normalized, and then we'll look at some some kind of takeaways from this in just a sec. But if you look at this, uh, usually <clears throat> the coins that are above this line are usually the more popular, the ones that have better marketing, ones that have a pretty strong community. They are essentially pulling up our average and then down below these are coins that have sort of fallen off the map they've struggled and so there's kind of a mix of both but you can kind of take it to the bank that any of these coins they have a following and they have um, a uh, there's kind of a group going on <clears throat> but even here so if you look at coins that are roughly around 1 billion um, total supply you can see that there's a giant difference in price. So we have we have this this coin here that is priced at 4,600 satoshis, and then another coin with the same uh, price, the same money supply is only at 35. So, and not to say that this 35 is going to go all the way up and get to this line, because this is probably a coin that. <clears throat> everyone's forgotten about and they have no community but if something's really odd like the rest of these are kind of in a group and then we have some wild outlier where normally they're around 10,000 Satoshis but this one's up here at 120,000 Satoshis it's possible that some of these might be mispriced so that's kind of what we're doing and I've posted the formula for this trend line here and so 
the R squared is nothing to brag about. <clears throat> it doesn't, you know, it's not a perfect one and it's certainly not above 0.9. R, R squared just shows you how predictive this line can be. So for those who don't know, if all of these points were on the line, our R squared would be one. But um, if we have an R squared of uh, less than 50, then it's starting to get less interesting. But to be at 0.67 essentially means that there is a trend. So we can at least confirm that there's a pattern here that the smaller the coin supply, the better the price versus Bitcoin. And the greater the coin supply, we can definitively say that it's going to be down in Satoshi land. So using this formula, we can take any current coin and plug in its, um, its coin supply. And we can see over time uh, generally how it's going to behave against this line. Now, this is also based on today's, today's prices. So today is October 28th of 2020. So the market's kind of doing its own thing. But even in relationship to each other, there, there are lessons that can be learned. And this, uh, we can kind of use this formula to sort of gauge. So now I'm going to move us over and we're going to take a look at some results. So I did this all in Excel because I'm an Excel nerd. So we will just put it right there. And I'll freeze the top row real quick. OK, so like I said, some of the, it's not 100 percent. It's not 100 percent that everything below the line is in green and everything above the line is in red. But you'll notice that a lot of these coins that are above the line are uh, more popular coins. They actually have a following. There's there's marketing. There's a lot more going into it. So we can't just take these these two, the coin supply and the price, and just absolutely definitively <clears throat> predict what the price should be. So there's a definitely a margin of error. But there are some coins that uh, are a little bit interesting. So what I did is I took the relationship between the high and the low and just made a, a ratio to see which ones were extreme. So our most extreme is Atom. The reason why it's 2.2 billion coin supply and it's trading at 36,000 Satoshis. Anything on our line mean anything with this type of coin supply should be trading at around 405. So this is our most extreme example. So it's very likely that Atom is overpriced and that it might be coming down. See, these, these are some coins that no one's ever heard of. So this is also in our, in our mix. So there's, we're not going to sit and buy R, whatever that is, <laughs> thinking that it's going to go up 20 times. <laughs> that's, that's not the purpose of this. <laughs> But there are cases where um, some questions can be answered. So a question that I have had is, on the news all the time, we see VeChain. VeChain has always, you know, they have a ton of following. They have a huge community. They have an interested group. <clears throat> but for some reason, they just can't keep their nose above 100 Satoshis. I mean, we've struggled. Um, I've, I've charted it out before, and that is definitely a, a switching point, that 100 Satoshi section. And there, there are hype cycles that will blow us way up above it, but uh, when, when the market's sort of in the doldrums, uh, we struggle. And you know what? It has to do with coin supply. There's 87 billion VeChain uh, chain tokens. And with this enormous money supply, there's just so much pressure there. According to the formula, we'd be at 14 Satoshis if it was just an average coin. Obviously, it's it's above average, but uh, if it is above average and it gets to 14, well, then that's when you buy because that's a, a good, good deal. <laughs> but that is sort of a revelation that we can take away from this. And there are a couple of coins that are a little bit um, surprising. If we get down a little bit further, 
there are some coins that um, are interesting. So look at this, uh, XVG, Verge. Uh, everyone loves Verge and it's trading at 29. But according to this, it's below the line. Even though they've got a giant supply of 16 and a half billion, um, they should be trading around 63. So potentially there's a 100% gain on the table for them. And there are a couple of others. So Pivx, I know, has a, a following. They're at 2,500 Satoshis, roughly. And uh, they could be, or should be, if they were an average coin, uh, trading at around 4,200. So very interesting. Uh, Raven is a coin that has a gigantic money supply. And it has dropped. And in fact, if it was average, it would be 51. So very, very interesting. One is, is uh, one of our commenters in the, in the video, in one of the videos, asked if, if one was uh, well-priced. And I looked and I saw that it had, you know, 20, almost 26 billion tokens and thought, oh my goodness, even if it was wildly successful, it would only be in the single digit Satoshis. But, um, you know, maybe it's not that badly priced. Maybe it's fairly priced. So very, very interesting. Um, so just so you can test this on your own, you can, you can mess around with this and see how uh, how one of your favorite coins is working by using this um, this price. So the formula here, let me bring it down a little bit. All we're taking is we're taking this 493167 times the money supply to the negative 0.923 power. So by doing that, it gives us the Y value of that, which would be our price. So back to the chart. We, there are a lot of coins that, um, so if to make this chart a little bit more precise and give us a little bit more direction, uh, each coin should be mapped to their hype cycle. And the hype cycle is usually connected to its uh, time in circulation. If a coin uh, has been, if it's, if it's less than six months old, it is most likely gonna be overpriced because it is in the middle of a hype, like a real good hype cycle. And if it's over two years old, it's going to either be pretty close to where price discovery is, or it's going to not be on our chart. <laughs> so there is a little bit of survivorship bias here as well. And what that is, is that if the coin is no longer traded on any exchange and it's completely failed and there's no price discovery, no one can buy it or sell it, uh, those coins don't show up here either. So there's also, you know, all of these are overpriced. Uh, if you consider the coins that have come in and just disappeared because there was no following but this definitely should give you something to think about. My, my, um, I just really feel like if you have a billion or more coins, you're going to have a hard time. It, 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 you're just not going to see a coin with that type of supply trading at 10 or 100 Satoshis. It's just not going to happen. So coins that are in 21 billion and above, they're, they're just going to struggle. And you just need to keep that in mind when you're uh, choosing a coin that you're trading because you know I, I look at the ups and downs and support and resistance levels but no support is going to hold uh, if, if a coin just has so much coin supply and not enough excitement that it just can't support it so I hope you guys learned something all right you guys we are almost to a thousand subscribers and when we get monetized I'm going to be giving away these enviable Coinbook t-shirts, the apex of crypto fashion. So if you could comment your ideas on how I should distribute these, I'm not sure if I should give out one per day or one to the best comment or one per week. Uh, so give me your ideas, but uh, I, I want to build this brand and expand our community.